Welcome back. I'm Jimmy Joe. We're playing What Remains of Edith Finch. Just learned about what happened to Greg. <sighs> it was very sad. I mean, all death is sad, but... Can you imagine? Like... <laughs> I, I can't, I can't even imagine, imagine my mom ever writing poetry and yet a poem for Gus who always said the wedding was a bad idea our father never hit us kids at least not very hard before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard <laughs> oh, it's a poem Please. Father made him come, of course, but Gus stood far apart, just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart. I tried to talk him out of it, but though he'd never met her, we don't need a stepmom, were the words that I now pronounce you husband and wife. I'm sure this hits home for some people. Some kids just don't want a stepmom. Or stepfather. When the time for photos came, Dad ordered him to come, come here. here. But Gus declined, and as a sign, held up his middle finger. Whoa! Let's uh, let's keep this appropriate. I don't remember. I don't, I don't know how old he was, but that's not okay. <laughs> the wind picked up, and panicked geese appeared and quickly went. But all the humans did that day was go inside the tent. The rain came down in buckets then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent our dad had crudely made. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I said it was a close and full of angry power. But all my father said to this was, "Make the music louder." I was, I said, oh, it's like a poem, and clearly it started as a poem, and I'm just, I, yeah, I'm dumb. It just looks so cool. I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone, just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't, until we found you. She never talked about him, but mom told me once if I was a boy, they were going to name me Gus. He was 13. Yeah. Come on. Close. Thank you. I don't think we ever learn about Don, do we? Let's see. Oh, we do. Okay. Oh, right, 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 right. I remember now. My mom moved up to the loft after her brothers died. At the time, it was as far away as she could get. Rock wall climbing while pregnant. <laughs> That's got to be hard. Not that uh, I know what it's like to be pregnant or anything, but... Religion was another thing my mom never talked about. But I think it helped her a lot after her dad died. She spent a summer building houses in Calcutta, where she met my dad, Sanjay. <coughs> oh, right. 
That's Sanjay. Okay. Was there anything else here? I don't think there was. But... It's a pretty cool little bedroom. My mom moved to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Lewis was born a year later. When my dad died, I don't think mom knew where else to go. I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back. It was cool to have a little garden on the and roof. And to see kids in the house again. <laughs> you can tell who's the kids. <laughs> like Milton just wanted to build towers. And, uh... Lewis did a couple of things, but the mom had tons of different ones. The house had to get a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. And for a while, things were good. Almost normal. <laughs> Lewis rules. Our family history? Fact or fiction? Hmm. Location tables. It's cool to have a little schoolhouse up here. Very neat. But it didn't last. The beginning Ugh. of the end was Milton's tenth birthday, when Edie gave him a castle. After Milton disappeared, the only thing he left behind was a room full of paintings. Hmm. Uh, okay. They never cleaned up his room after he made a mess of everything, but... I think Edie was happy to finally have another painter in the family. I was very good at it. And what kid doesn't want an elevator in their room? Imagine when it was raining. Milton Finch in The Magic Paintbrush. <laughs> it's a flip book within a flip book. It's like Inception. searching for my brother. Then she sealed the doors. It 
Such a cool room. Whatever Milton had found in the house, Mom didn't want it getting out. I don't think it ever says what Milton found in the house. These stairs, they just look so dangerous. Mom definitely blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room. Until Mom got him a job at the cannery. Everyone always told me to stay out of Lewis's room. Except Lewis. <laughs> I wonder why. Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't realize there was broken stairs there. It's cool that there's two, we two ways into every room in this house. Lewis's room smelled very, very familiar. <laughs> that part of him lived on. I wonder why. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Lewis and I spent a lot of time playing games together, but he was surprisingly bad at them. He died a lot. Dear Sad. Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. He kept working at the cannery, but he withdrew part of himself. In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to... Wander? Wander. There we go. I asked him to describe it. He said he started small. Imagining a labyrinth. He'd feel his way about. Uh, this is so difficult then doing two things moved. at once. Bats. And toads. And things that have not names. He knew it was all in his head. <laughs> you have to cut the fish to get he through. He took it very seriously. I had hoped he'd find himself. Come on. Phone's going off again. All right. But he found something more. I worried about him then. Daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Hmm. Methodical, tireless, focused. A whole new Lewis. Uh, doing two things at once is hard. So I let him go on. I even encouraged him. It seemed very promising at first. He told me he'd made a new friend. Oh, dog. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. <laughs> he built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. Oh, 
Oh man, frame rates are dropping on OBS. And songs for them to play. How is this so graphically intensive? He talked about starting a band. And he was always humming something. Every day his imagination grew stronger. Hold on. Let's see if I can make this better. Hopefully that fixed it. He no longer spoke. Oh, it didn't fix it. Ah! There's too many things going on. But his chopping was as reliable as ever. Holy crap! Hopefully this helps. I had to lower the then one day it struck graphics of the game. At all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination. So he could do whatever he wished. He held an election for me. It's this fish. This fish and keeps. He won. <laughs> they begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. I wonder if I can just not have to do with the it fish. It became a game for him. They're getting bigger. He'd conquer a city, then immediately push on. Hooray! In Louisville. Louisville. St. Louis. He started drifting away from our reality. Minneapolis, until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. Minneapolis. Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. Whisper, he heard rumors of a handsome queen. Handsome queen. Oh man, there's too many pixels. I just updated my computer. My game's running fine, but the uh, the recording sucks. I'm the sorry. queen was on her own quest for. Sinister serpents. He followed the sound of her. Sitar. Electric sitar. His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained sound. He knew the world was all in his imagination. There's too many fish on the screen. Get away, fish. Stupid fish, you're killing my recording! But he was so proud of having created it. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. He 
someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. And then it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. Pick it up, pick it up. Oh, I already have one. Weird. It was hard to argue with him. Okay. Huh. That turned out differently than last time. Oh, this one must be mine. He began to forget the world we know. Oh, it, did, it didn't turn out differently. I just haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. Hmm. He began to despise the man with a royal contempt. Look how sad this is. When somebody's completely lost it. I still thought I could save him. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. <laughs> Hooray! The palace would be packed with his companions. Creepy no face people. The wise calico had insisted on advising. <laughs> there was only one thing left to do. <sighs> Bend down his head. Yeah. such an elaborate story. I wonder how it actually works. Oh. Best I think you know. Ugh. Mrs. Finch, your son, was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. Ugh. Still giving me shivers. My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. Well, we will leave off there for now. This one went a little long, but I did want to finish that uh, that story of Lewis. So, come back next time. We'll f I think we have Dawn and Edie left. A couple more. Maybe uh, one or two more episodes. All right. So, uh, if you're liking it, like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.